Yep, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy another awesome article by Captain Franklin Air. Please subscribe, like, and share with all your friends and all the people you hate too. Chances are a blood test was an integral part of your last routine physical. Such tests are a valuable tool in checking your overall health and hopefully heading off potential problems via early detection. The same is true for testing the lifeblood of your boat's engine. An oil sample analysis, or OSA, not only tells you about the current health of your engine or transmission, but can also warn of potential future issues before they become critical, saving you money and heading off premature failure. Here's how they work. The magic of oil. The oil that's so unceremoniously dumped into your boat's engine is actually a modern marvel of engineering. In addition to providing lubrication, oil also neutralizes corrosive acids generated during operation and cleans internal engine parts of wear material, keeping these contaminants in suspension until removal. The amount of materials and toxins suspended in the oil eventually reaches a level where it begins to affect its ability to properly lubricate the engine. At this point, it's time for a transfusion, a.k.a. oil change, presenting a great opportunity to test the old engine blood for problems. OSA reports. An OSA evaluates the types and quantities of metal suspended in the oil, as well as other contaminants, water, antifreeze, fuel, soot, or whatever. The report generated by the lab will list contaminants and wear material, metal that's worn off of interior components, and flag any suspected issues. In addition to explaining the results, the reports will also state possible causes uh, of any flagged issues, along with recommendations to address them. Uh, sampling kits. An OSA kit can easily be purchased online or at many local heavy equipment dealers. Cost typically runs about $20 to $30. Male-friendly testing facilities such as Blackstone Laboratories, uh, I'll put the uh, website address for that in the comments below, uh, they're popular choices. Blackstone, for example, offers a free oil sample kit and analysis for 35 bucks, including shipping, and with a 24 to 48 hour turnaround time. And this is probably a good a time as any to say that I don't get any kickback or anything from any of these companies I mentioned, Blackstone or anybody. I just have used them in the past with satisfactory results. That's not a recommendation that you will get the same satisfaction or you should use them. I'm just letting you know what I've used with good results. Uh, OSA kits include a collection bottle with a screw-on lid, an information label to be completed by the person taking the sample, a length of plastic tubing, and packaging of some type to mail the uh, sample to the lab. You can also purchase a reusable hand-operated pump to draw samples via the dipstick tube or opening. The one from Blackstone Laboratories uses a vacuum to draw oil up into the sample container, which screws into the body of the pump. In this design, the oil never touches the pump, eliminating the need to clean it between use. You'll want to replace the uh, intake tubing, however, which can be purchased at most any uh, hardware store. Taking the sample. The prime directive of taking an oil sample is avoiding contamination. This ensures the sample accurately represents the condition of the fluid in the engine or gearbox, reduction gear, transmission, whatever you want to call it. Sampling faux pas to avoid include taking a sample from the pan after the oil is drained, allowing the suction tube to touch the bottom of the oil pan when sampling, more on this in a moment, and reusing tubing or sample jars. You'll want to follow the instructions from the manufacturer of your OSA kit. However, the following general steps will be useful when taking most any sample. Number one, run the engine. Don't just idle it for 20 minutes or so to warm the oil to operating temperature and suspend the particles before taking the sample. Number two, if you're taking a sample while changing the oil and have access to the oil pan, let about one quarter of the oil drain out before taking your sample. Avoid sampling the first or the last oil out of the pan to avoid samples with an excessive amount of contaminants. Uh, number three, if you can't access the pan, then you'll need to use a pump. Remove the cap from the sample bottle and place it in a clean location to avoid contamination. Then screw the sample bottle onto the pump. Cut a section of intake tubing, one long enough to uh, allow you to be in a comfortable position while operating the pump. Insert one end of the tube into the pump and tighten the seal uh, per the pump instructions. Number four, 
The suction end of the tube will be threaded down into the engine, typically two to three inches to draw the sample. Before doing this, uh, pull the dipstick and place it beside the tubing. Uh, that allows you to gauge how far to insert the tube to withdraw the sample without touching the bottom. Contaminants are more concentrated at the bottom and touching it or taking a sample there will result in skewed readings. Number five, pump the required amount of oil into the bottle. Most laboratories will request around two to three ounces, keeping the pump level during operation. When finished, unscrew the bottle and replace the lid securely. Number six, complete the oil sample information slip. Typical information requested will include a unit number or name, uh, such as the port engine, generator, whatever, uh, type of oil, number of hours the oil has been in service, number of quarts added between oil changes, and so on and so forth. Fill out the form as completely and accurately as possible. Number seven, place the bottle and label it in the provided container and mail or return it to the equipment dealer you purchased it from. Conducting a regular oil sample analysis not only helps maintain your engine, transmission, or whatever you're testing, but the maintenance log of testing it produces can also be a valuable sales tool, one that helps demonstrate the vessel has been maintained by a conscientious owner. I often have people ask me when I'm conducting like pre-purchase surveys, uh, well, should we do an oil sample analysis? And, you know, if you have a uh, boat that uh, the owner does uh, routine or regular oil sample analysis, that's a good thing. It, it lets you, you know, see how the oil samples, uh, you can compare them over the long term and see if there's any trends, right? But if it's a one-shot deal, you know, I tell them, hey, you know, it's kind of like a blood test. It'll tell you if you got high cholesterol, but it probably won't uh, determine if you're going to have a heart attack. And it's kind of the same thing with the engines uh, or transmissions when you do a one-shot deal. I'm not saying they're not uh, something that's good to do because it can tell you if you have uh, some severe contamination or um, problems with uh, internal components and stuff. But there's no doubt about it. Oil sample analysis are more beneficial when you have multiple uh, you know, test points and you can compare uh, samples taken over a period of time. That way it allows you to look at any trends in the uh, oil samples or the, how the engines or transmissions are operating. Common OSA test. Uh, let's just touch on a few of the common tests that you'll have done or the lab will do for your OSA test. Uh, spectral exam. In this test the oil is vaporized and sent through a spectrophotometer. Yeah baby. To measure the concentration of various metals and additives at each light wavelength, uh, color is what they're talking about there. The lab correlates these light levels with the amount of each metal present in the sample. This test is useful to uh, determine excessive wear in pistons, bearings, cylinders, valve, trains, and gears. Viscosity test. Uh, that tests the uh, thickness of the oil sample at various test temperatures. It's useful for finding fuel dilution, breakdown, uh, or viscosity enhancers or other oil contaminants. Uh, insolubles test. Insolubles are generally abrasive solids. Evaluated readings typically indicate uh, incomplete combustion. Finally, we're going to close with one of my 60-second survey shorts. Uh, this video is of a guy, that uh, a mechanic, that was doing the engine surveys when I was doing a pre-purchase survey. And you can tell this guy does a ton of them, and it's kind of fun to watch. Uh, check him out, and if you like that, be sure to check out my other 60-second survey video shorts. And here we go. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, and you want to buy Captain Frank a cup of coffee, please click on the thanks button below this video. 
All tips received, not spent on coffee, will be used to improve my YouTube channel and create even more awesome videos.